Today is December 20th, 2020, just three days before Christmas. I'm Jim Sinecropi, and welcome to another edition of the Around the Lakes podcast on FingerLakes1.com. Jason Madaw of Ma- Marcellus and his family have designed, created, and proposed a Lego based a Lego set based on the classic holiday film, It's a Wonderful Life, which is widely believed to be set right here in Seneca Falls, New York. Uh, currently, their creation is up for vote at the official Lego website, and I have Jason in studio with me this afternoon. And before we welcome him in, just let's take a look at uh, what this is all about here with this short video. So for fans of the movie or Legos or ideally fans of both, this is awesome and welcome are happy to welcome in Jason to the studio. And Jason Mida, am I saying that right? Uh, yeah, Midoff. Midoff, okay. Yep. We did a lot of pre show uh <laughs> interview, pre interview, but I didn't ask how to pronounce the name. So <laughs> no um anyways, welcome in and uh Thanks so much for having me. Congratulations on all the buzz that this is receiving and as someone who loves the movie myself it, it's uh it's awesome well thank you so much it's been a labor of love with my uh, 12 year old daughter jane so jane and your wife tina mm-hmm. live in marcellus we do and what was it about as we get a look there of uh the live shot of the lego set the it's a wonderful lego life set um, but why legos what is it were you a fan of legos when you were younger is your daughter into legos how did this happen yeah so um you know i guess this kind of has, has a connection to the to the finger legs too um this was my favorite toy growing up right and and i had geez probably hundreds of sets and boxes uh, at my parents house and um you know the time came they they gave them back to me and and my daughter was probably around six years old. We we broke open the uh, the boxes of of Lego, uh, started pulling out the old sets, and I thought it might be really neat if I could maybe build her a set. Mm-hmm. So we have a little uh, camp around here. We call it a camp. Some people call it, I guess like a cottage, right yep. on um, Lake Como. I'm not sure if you know where that is. It's okay. just south of uh, Skinny Atlas and Owasco Lake between those two lakes. Little little lake. And uh, for Christmas one year, I thought it might be really fun to try to design our little cottage and get all the pieces and um, make the instructions. Uh, So I gave her this little custom set for Christmas one year. And uh, it turned out to be pretty neat. Uh, My my wife loved it. She said, hey, you should submit this idea to Lego. And I laughed it off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't don't think you can do that. And uh, it turns out there's a whole formal process. there's a you know sets like uh, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, these things all became Lego sets through fan submitted ideas. Uh, so, you know, I thought we would try something that everybody would love. Um, right. And uh, I think it's pretty obvious that almost everybody loves It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, certainly uh, around here, especially uh, we love it. Um, big festival here every year obviously um not this year but looking forward to get back in 2021 um so are you personally fond of the movie as well is it like one of your favorites is it your favorite it is one of my favorites i I, i'm we're huge christmas story or christmas movie fans yeah um you know christmas story it's a wonderful life we love all the versions of a christmas carol all that type Mm -hmm. of stuff um, and it's funny because I always kind of felt like I discovered It's Wonderful Life, even though that's right. ridiculous, right? But I was probably, uh, you know, 10, 12 years old. And it was when it was playing in a loop over and over on time. TV. And I, I caught it towards the end of it, actually. It was the scene in, I guess it was Nick's bar where he, like, sprays uh, Mr. Martini. Gower in the I'm face. Mr. McGower, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, and I watched it from there to the end of the movie. And I was like, "Wow, I have to see the rest of this movie." Yeah. And the same day, it was on again. Uh, it was because it kept playing in a loop. So, um, so I watched the rest of the movie, and I was I was pretty much blown away. 
So my my younger brother was probably eight years old at the time, and I pulled him aside. You know, the next day it was on. I'm like, we got to watch this whole movie. And then from then on, I was just kind of kind of hooked. Um, it's it's a fantastic movie, and we've learned that you know it's it, even though it's got the local connection, you know, it's mm-hmm. really a worldwide sure. favorite. You know, I think it's the number one movie in in the UK, for example. Yeah, it's wild uh, because it wasn't successful straight out of the box office back in the nineteen early nineteen fifties, or was it nineteen forty seven? I think was. It? Uh, yeah, I think forty. The end, very end of forty six. It, it came, yeah. I think like the December of forty six. But yeah. And uh, I have a similar story, too. I was just, my mother was wrapping paper, uh, wrapping presents one Christmas when I was probably about 10 years old, and I just happened to wander up there, um, and as she was wrapping, she had this movie on, and I st- was just watching it because I was sitting there, but it was a black and white movie, and I was sure. like, you know, what? but, you know, it only took about 10, 15 minutes, and I was hooked, and then the end, of course, is just mind-blowing. It is. You know, so it not is. to spoil it for anyone who may <laughs> yeah. not have seen it yet, I can't imagine watch people it. haven't, but, um, yeah, and we watched it again this year. I watch it at least once a year. Um, it's, it is fantastic, so... You take your love of the movie and your love of Legos and you create something, you know, really awesome. I mean, the the world of Legos has really evolved into, I don't know if I'd call it a sport um, or an art. It's, it's kind of its own unique thing where there are some really amazing Lego creations. And what you've done here um, is in quite impressive detail created some of the main scenes from the movie and inside that house even the rooms yeah, are similar all, the the, yeah, the uh, opens up yep the stairway where the the ballast the, the comes new, off the new post yeah so that was one of the first things i actually before i ever built the house um i just kind of experimented with little things where i wanted it something to be enough that it could hold it together yeah but something you could take off without the whole thing coming off right. so we kind of designed that little uh the little new post and to me um it's those little details that kind of make the set um, you know, fun. And it's funny you say it's kind of evolved into this art. I, I have a joke with my wife. We call it math art, right? Yeah. So for people who kind of think in shapes, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's got its own kind of set of rules. Uh, and um, But you can do some really neat stuff. You know, I, I've seen really, really amazing things that – that people do, you know, and I, I don't even humble myself to think I'm in the league with some yeah, of the some things that people can do. Life size yeah. types of things. I think they've built cars out of, <laughs> out of, out of Lego. So, um, but again, this this is really meant to be um, playable for my my 12 year old daughter, and then the whole thing is kind of a lesson um, that with a little bit of creativity and that hard work, um, you can actually make something pretty incredible potentially happen and that's that's really what we're trying to do and there are a lot of little touches like zuzu's pedals and the george lasso's the moon and uh yeah so the george lasso's the moon that's another good story because this really is a family project Mm -hmm. and my wife is she's a she's a really good artist um so i'd asked her to to draw that and actually if you go to the it's wonderful life museum we gave them the it's a one by one canvas she drew a lego version of um George Lasso's the moon. We she made it on a canvas that's about one foot by one foot, and then we, uh, you know, s- scanned it in, shrunk it down to the size of a Lego piece, printed it out on um, sticker paper, and then in in our house is the little uh, George Lasso's the moon. So it actually kind of fits the Lego look because if you put something that's totally not Lego inside a Lego design, it kind of stands <laughs> out. But yeah. if it has that little yeah, she drew it as a Lego figure yeah. lassoing the moon. Um, that's cool. Which which was one of those fun little touches so i see that you have the granville house which is just over my uh, back shoulder over here from where i'm sitting in the studio <laughs> about you know 200 yards this way yeah um right. supposedly <laughs> and then we have uh, the bridge of course the bridge street bridge the george bailey bridge and um, a lot of the characters the welcome to bedford falls sign um, but I see you have uh, Bailey's Building and Loan as well, but that's not part of the set that was submitted to Lego. That's something extra. That's right. Um, so, you know, just for fun, my daughter and I like to build, you know, different things. And and the first building we actually built was the Building and Loan, just to kind of fit in her little city. You know, we thought it would be fun to do. And, and last year, you know, it was just kind of sitting around our house. I, I brought it up to the museum and said, hey, do you guys just want to display this for a little while? Mm-hmm. And um, I just got to talking to him about it and and a little bit about the Lego Ideas process. And they were very, very excited about the prospect of uh, It's Wonderful Life being an official Lego set. And so, 
you know, from that, um, we, we kind of took a step back and said, you know what, maybe we can try this. Um, but we thought a better submission would be the, the Granville House, the bridge, um, you know, George's car, the, the uh, you are now in Bedford Falls sign. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lego could always choose to expand later Build on. Build an expansion set, sure. Yep, yep, they could totally do that. Um, but but we thought the house would be probably the best start of a, of a potential um, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Any other theme. things considered? Like martinis you mentioned, maybe martinis or Nick's bar? So I think the next piece that we would do probably is going to be uh, Gower's drug. Yep. Right? Because there's some really pivotal... Uh, scenes in the movie that that happened there, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so again, those are just kind of be for fun. And they have got the museum expansion coming up in in a couple of years. So they each one of these two we made copies, and so if anybody wants to see uh, what they what they look like, they can actually visit the museum. They've got them right. them at the museum too. Well, it is pretty awesome. I can almost imagine, you know, setting up a whole scene every Christmas. So this is something that you would, if Lego makes it, you know, that you could construct and either leave it together or reconstruct every year, yeah. break it out, set it up as a display. Yeah, you could do it as a family tradition, mm-hmm. build it each year or, or leave them together and put them out. I mean, that's one of the really neat things about holiday movies is, you know, there's 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 a few movies kind of like that, you know, uh, uh, Wizard of Oz and Star Wars that just are perpetually popular they're never yeah. gonna really die off uh, but holiday movies are every single year you know have that that appeal and you know my my, my pitch to lego would be you know what better way um to, to every year have us uh, you know the folks reminded yeah. of the most iconic toy as they put out their their lego christmas village um so uh yeah it's evergreen uh really you know yeah. it keeps giving and giving and um, and yeah, but Christmas movies are like that. And same thing with Christmas music. You know, it's because <laughs> there's rules. You only get to That's enjoy right. them during this <laughs> sliver of time. And so every year you look forward to them, and then um, they go away, and you don't think about them. And then when they come back, you realize what you love so much about them. And, and there's always these debates about what constitutes a Christmas movie and what doesn't. And that it's funny you say that because that I was just telling my wife yesterday. That's that is how I judge the rule. If I watch the movie a different time of the year. Right. That I don't call it a Christmas right. movie. If I only watch it at Christmas time, then I'll consider it a Christmas movie. No, I agree with that. That's a good rule. Um, so you decide, decide you're going to submit it to Lego. So what was that process like? So um, Lego has their own site. Uh, it's ideas.lego.com. Um, they actually have thousands of projects out there, people, <laughs> people around the world, um, because Lego is based out of uh, Denmark. So, so it is certainly a global toy and a, gl- a global company. Um, what you basically do is you take, uh, you build your your model, um, or you can do it. They have some software that you can do digital versions, right? Um, and you take photos of your model, you place them out there with a description, um, and then comes the long process of trying to collect support, which are in the form of votes. And so, any project that uh, receives 10,000 votes uh, will go into a Lego review process uh, with Lego and then potentially be chosen uh, as the next Lego set. What's kind of neat about It's a Wonderful Life too, and something that I learned, I actually learned this after I submitted it. Uh, Lego works out the licensing and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about any of that piece. So you can, you can submit things like mm-hmm. Ghostbusters and Back to the Future and things like that that became sets. Um, but it's a wonderful life, actually, in the public domain. Um, so uh, they would. Well, not... it was, but then I think NBC bought the rights back. So, How does so that the, work? Yeah, so I read all about it. The trick <laughs> is NBC owns the music and they own the greatest gift story. I okay. Guess, right? So, so airing the full movie kind of falls under that. Yeah. But something like a Lego set, which really has nothing to do with the music, has nothing to do with the story itself. Um, would would be uh, still not require a, a license. So hopefully that hurdle, um, if we can ultimately get to ten thousand, we could we could uh, easily get it proved through the through the Lego process. Well, that's great. Um, we we're just showing some folks the Lego website. I appreciate that <laughs> and uh, some of the photos. 
uh, showing the interior of some of the buildings and some of the characters up close. It's uh, it's amazing. So right now you have over a thousand supporters, which is a a big first milestone, right? To get it, it to a thousand. Um, but the next goal now is ten thousand. And how long yeah. do you have to get those ten thousand votes? So it depends. As you get support, you get more days. So mm -hmm. so you get sixty days to get to a hundred. Once you get to a hundred, they'll give you another year ex uh, extension. Once we got to a thousand, we have another six months after that. Then to get to five thousand, if you get to five thousand, they give you an additional six months. So overall, you could have up to two years. Now, one of the tricks about a holiday project yeah. is collecting the support once the holidays are over. So we had a great start. We submitted it during the holiday season. We just got to hope that that don't, momentum doesn't die down. And when was it first year. submitted? The beginning of this month. Okay, so you're so, off to a really so good we, start. We had a really good start. Yeah. Um, people are, are really excited about it. And so what we're hoping is, uh, you know, over these next couple of weeks to get a really good boost then kind of keep some momentum in, into the new year. Um, best case would be maybe around next year, um, trying to get to that 10,000 mark. Yeah. And then maybe for the opening of the museum in, in 2022-ish, mm -hmm. um, you know, have like a grand opening. Well, the festival will be in back next year. There's a lot of candidates there to vote. So hopefully that yeah. would, there can be some sort of campaign, um, you know, put forth during the festival next year as well, um, if we can't get there sooner. One other interesting thing, too, uh, It's a Wonderful Lego Life, it was actually Tommy Bailey, uh, who's Jimmy Hawkins, mm -hmm. um, who came up with that name. So I mentioned la that I'd put the Bailey Building and Loan uh, on display at the museum. So it was there for last year's festival. We weren't there, but the set was there. Right. And he was there. And um, the folks there had mentioned, oh, he had this idea for calling it It's a Wonderful Lego Life, which we thought that's that that's a great idea. So, so ultimately, uh, the name of the project is uh, by one of the original cast me members of the movie. Yeah, that's great. Um, so... I voted, and it's not. Uh, it's a very simple process. You'll go. You have to register an account, but it's really quick. You give your, an email. They send you a confirmation. Yep. Then you can vote and have your support and add to that. So I suggest that everyone that would like to see this actually become a reality uh, to go ahead and do that, um, and then uh, see if we can get that up to that next milestone. Yeah, I definitely uh, appreciate that, and 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 that's that's probably the biggest hurdle. Like. Um, people love the set. People like the set. People share the set. They do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if we ultimately want to make it happen, you actually have to go in mm -hmm. and vote for it. Don't think that other people are going to do it because everybody's going to have that same thought. So. Yeah, it took it, it, the whole process took about twenty to thirty seconds. You know, with the registration and everything, yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, and it's also fun when you're in there to see all the other designs. Now, remember, <laughs> we're voting for this one. There might be others you like, yeah. but. Um, yeah. And you can vote for multiple ones. Absolutely. Too. So there's no, and I, I would encourage that, right? Go mm -hmm. go through this. It, it's, again, I mentioned earlier that it's amazing what people It do. really is. Um, and most of the projects out there are more digital renderings because there's really good software. I'm not so great at that. And the idea of this project was really to have the set and to have my daughter, you know, to build yeah. it and, and, and have it for her to play with. So, so the end game was to ultimately have it, at least for us. We're hoping we can share it with the rest of the world. Um, but there's there's some really really amazing stuff out there. Um, I definitely encourage folks to check that out too. So, let's say that this does go into production with Lego at some point in the future. Would they change like everything, or would they keep it essentially the same? Um, I've seen it both ways. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yes. So they have full uh, 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 liberty to change however they want. Um, so there's some sets that look very, very similar to what was submitted, uh, some that are wholly different. There's there's different reasons for that. You know, um, some of them are structural, with, and that's one of the reasons why I also like to build it, um, because we know that it's, you know, structurally sound and, right. and it comes apart and, and all that stuff without issue. But But sometimes when you're building with just software, you know, it doesn't quite translate to the real world when you put it together. Um, and depending on the on the different pieces that are available and and you know the expenses uh, of of the set as a whole, mm -hmm. there's a lot that would go into what they'd ultimately decide to do. Um, I hope that they keep it would keep it um, pretty close to what we submitted, uh, but ultimately, you know, just to have it uh, come to fruition would be a pretty amazing thing for uh, 
for my family and particularly my daughter. We, we always talked about they give you free sets. So if you get it, one of one of the perks is they give you ten free sets. Oh jeez! And so okay. I told my daughter, it doesn't matter. The day that happens, we're walking into a Lego store and we're, and we're going to buy the set. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that would be quite a thrill for sure. Um, so we're here in Seneca Falls, and Bedford Falls is in the movie or. Uh, supposedly inspired by Seneca Falls. I think so. There's just been so much uh, similarity uh, to it. Um, but what do you think? I absolutely think that that is true. Um, I first heard that when I was younger, and I, I was excited about the prospect. Yeah. Um, I'll, you know, I'll give you, I think, which are the pretty obvious reasons. I mean, there's there's upstate New York references throughout the right. movie. There's there's Rochester. There's They mention um, Elmira. Elmira. Um, the bridge itself, um, uh, the similarities to the to the look of, yeah. and, and just the the name of the town, right? Bedford Falls versus Seneca Falls, yeah. and probably the the biggest um, piece of evidence was that uh, Frank Capra was here. Yep, he was here in 1945, which is essentially when they were writing the script of the movie. There's a plaque on the bridge uh, talking Vaccarelli. about Vaccarelli. exactly yep. um, uh, an Italian immigrant who. Jumped into the water to 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 save somebody, um, so to me, that is too much to be uh, right. coincidence. And uh, I think even Carolyn Grimes, who played Zuzu in the movie, you know, she's very supportive. Um, we haven't had a chance to meet her yet. We're she's been to up be here to. in the studio multiple times oh, over the she? years. Yeah, she's great. She's she firmly believes. Yeah, that. so she firm, and, and that's another. Um, you know, she's kind of the ambassador of the movie, and she's she's not from here, so she has no right. you know reason to to uh, yep. to to promote it uh, if she didn't truly believe it. So um, there's so much more to to it. Um, you know the uh, the fact that uh, Bailey Park or yeah Bailey Field Bailey Park well there's a yep. section in Santa Claus Park, called yep. Rumseyville um, where. Most of the Italian immigrants in the early half of the century settled, yeah. um, including my father, you know, yeah. uh, my father's parents and, and all my aunts and uncles from that generation. They lived in Rumseyville, and it was the same type of uh, deal. It was, you know, affordable, um, nice housing, uh, and these folks, you know, worked hard at the factory, ghouls, pumps, and um, were able to, you know, build a life there in Rumseyville. So that part is is, is very similar. Um and you know there's just there is there's just so much to it uh, the old layout of downtown during the time when frank capper was here with the divider in the middle and the bulb street lights and yeah um so but maybe that's a topic for another show <laughs> any favorite scenes in the movie if you had to pick one favorite scene yeah so i mean it's or pick two or three if you want. The ones that stand out yeah, to you the most. I talked a little bit about um, the scene that got me hooked at the beginning. You know, the the part in uh, in Nick's bar um, where I, I felt so badly for uh, for Mr. Gower. Yeah. Right. And um, and seeing it through the beginning, you know how that all came about. Um, because that hooked me. That's a personal kind of uh, mm -hmm. favorite scene. But you know the end of the movie can't be denied, right? There's almost yeah, no you know no end uh, to another movie that is like that. Um, so I agree with you, know, you there. I, I, to I, my I, big brother George, <laughs> the richest man in town, yeah. that moment, it, it still after watching 150 times, it still yeah. you know hits me. Yeah, yep, it's great. Um, there, you know, there are some weird things about the movie too, in the fact that um, you know when it was filmed. So you know, we mentioned that scene when uh, Mr. Gower. Uh, poison, put the poison in the pill, and George, you know, prevents him from poisoning yeah. the kid. And uh, George, he beats on George pretty good. <laughs> he He's drunk. Does. He hits him pretty good. He does. He does. Yeah. And, and it's it's. And again, that's another. It 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 um, elicits that emotional response. You know, he just lost his son to a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, you know, so I. Some people see the movie and and don't get some of that part right. of it, the realism, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I've had people tell me, oh, George Bailey was just a drunk, right? And and that completely kind of misses the point, yeah. um, you know, and, and 
and you can forgive, you know, the way he talk. you know, my wife's a teacher, but the way he talks to his daughter's teacher. Oh, I know. It's, you know, it's, but, it's upset. But that's part of but, what makes but, a movie great. I agree. It makes it real and you understand it. And, and you pretty much know that the next day George is going to be going over to the Welsh's, yeah. right? And, and, and one of the best things about the movie is that you never see Potter get it. <laughs> oh, unless you it's, watch Saturday Night Live. Yes, unless you, you watch Saturday Night Live with skit? John Lovitz. Yes, <laughs> yes. But you can imagine that, right? right? And what greater punishment than him waking up Christmas morning and finding out he doesn't have the building in love yeah, like right. he thought. <laughs> yeah. And there, you know, I do love, I love, love, love the movie. But when you watch it so many times, there's some things about it that just don't sit well with me. And one is the fact that everybody's bringing him all this money. First of all, you know, is a... George Bailey, a businessman, it's got to be that's got to be hard to take, you know. Um, <laughs> even though it wasn't necessarily his fault that Uncle Billy, you know, and I really would just want to shake Uncle Billy, yeah. like, do your job, George, Uncle Billy. You have one yeah. job, money to the <laughs> bank. You blew it. <laughs> and George takes the blame for it too, right? Yeah. In front of Potter, he says he lost the money, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. It's it's frustrating a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then you know, I also feel like when. Uh, when uh, they wire him the money from Europe there. Uh, Sam Wainwright. Sam Wainwright wires the money. I feel like he should be like, okay, guys, I got this yeah, loan from Sam Wainwright. <laughs> Everybody get your money back. back. They had their housekeeper give her entire savings. Yeah. So, <laughs> Mr. So, Martini broke open the jukebox. Perhaps that, that does end up happening. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's, but, yeah, and, and, and watching it so many times, you, um, you know, I, I'll give you one of the things that I noticed that I think is uh, – probably nobody's ever thought about so when um when they go to bailey park with clarence and it's a graveyard mm -hmm. right and he finds the grave of his brother um which they have the age wrong which is something different yep. i don't know if you ever noticed that yeah. right but even more so if you think about it that that means that his brother's grave would have probably been the first grave <laughs> In that grave, they started the graveyard. Right. Then with his brother, which is, which is something that's probably not yeah. <laughs> something that. And would have if happened. George was never born, would they have even gone? Would he have even gone sledding with the older with kids the other to kids. begin with? Exactly. Who knows? But hey. but yes, it just we're nitpicking. Right. But that just shows, I think, how many times we've seen it. Yeah, I know. It. I know. It. It's uh, it doesn't make me like it any less, and I watch it every yeah. year. But you know, you do microanalyze all this stuff. But as you said, it is also very. Um, poignant as to how they wove in the um the uh actual true life events of that era you know whether yeah. it be the depression or the, the pandemic or, or you know all that uh yeah yeah so. yep yeah. and the war and and you know during the uh during the run on the bank i don't know if you ever noticed he's got a picture of president herbert hoover mm -hmm. on his wall <laughs> so yep yeah, that's uh it's great stuff. So, um, you know, it's a little different Christmas for us this year with the pandemic. Are you and your family doing anything different? Um, you know, how you how you guys handling it? Um, a little smaller get-togethers. Yep. You know, we're gonna still get, try to get together with a, a small group of my wife's family and a small group of of our family. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a little bit a little bit different. I think that. My, I mean, I'm 48 years old, so 48, Chris, 47 Christmases I've gone through, you know, all pretty much the same, all awesome. I've been lucky enough to uh, have a great family and have had, uh, we have a good time on Christmas. Um, but, you know, maybe a year like this will make you appreciate more next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, we're doing a little less. Um, I have uh, older aunts and uncles, and uh, it was decided that we weren't going to do our big thing, so it'll be a smaller thing i'm actually going to host it at my house uh which is something i wouldn't normally do so that's an opportunity there i guess to host a christmas it. eve so uh but either way uh this is just amazing and you got to get out there to ideas.lego.com uh, you can also go to the wonderful life museum website and there's access there to it uh to get your vote in uh, you know the more the sooner you, you do that the better and let's get that number up there and make this set a reality it, uh, it would just be another notch in the belt for us here in the finger lakes in seneca falls uh the most iconic movie of all time uh and it now 
we'll hopefully get its Lego set in. So, Jason, I appreciate you coming in. Um, and congratulations to you and uh, your wife, Tina, and daughter, Jane, on, on coming up with something so cool. Thank you so much. Um, and then we absolutely appreciate all the feedback we've get, been given so far. Um, you know, our, our hope is that this is kind of our own uh, scene at the end of the movie, kind of where everybody kind of comes together to make something pretty amazing happen. Um, so I just wanted to say how much we appreciate all the support we've gotten so far. Well, when it does get accepted in and wins the contest, um, we're going to have you back in to hear about the next step. I will be happy to be here. So Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. So thanks for joining us on the Around the Lakes podcast. I'm Jim Sinecropi, and for all of us at FingerLakes1.com, Merry Christmas, and we hope you have a fantastic holiday.